So in this segment, we're going to be talking about this joker, Alistair Heath, and I might as well turn my channel into a guy who just debunks Telegraph articles, honestly, because the, these people are some lost souls out here. The, these people... What what are these people's credentials to write these articles, honestly? Should I, should I just change and write nonsense for the Telegraph? Probably be easier than debunking them. But um, Alistair Heath saying, Time is running out for the Tory party the epidemic of rule-breaking, broken promises and generalised incompetence and carelessness are trashing not just the PM's reputation but all Tories. So you're telling me all of these things, right, are happening. An endemic of rule-breaking, broken promises, incompetence and carelessness and you still want these people in charge because apparently the alternative is a left-wing coalition of Sir Keir Starmer supported by the SNP, Welsh, Welsh Nationalists, Greens and other rabble-rousers may seize power in 23 or 24. Such an outcome would be calamitous. What are we at now then if the situation right now isn't calamitous? Honestly, you've, you've just listed a whole host of issues you have with the current Prime Minister and, and suddenly you're like, oh yeah, it'd be really bad if these left-wingers were in charge, huh? Does anyone actually believe people like him? This would result in a vicious class and cultural which we're already seeing now. We're already seeing a vicious class and cultural a cost of living crisis, rising national insurance contributions by lower um, sort of lower and lower middle class people, lower working class people and lower middle class people. Working class people and lower middle class people, sorry. Honestly, what what the hell, man? Like, would never recover from. Have you seen inflation numbers right now? Because they are way higher than what the ONS are reporting. Shouts out Jack, Jack Monroe for that. Bootstrap cook. There are now just two viable options if the party is to bounce back. The first is Boris to, to remain in office, attempt to fix the immediate damage caused by Partygate. I mean, how's he going to do that? And then recant his worst policies and delegate. Oh, here we go. Huge amounts, so delegate huge amounts of power to David Frost, um, like CEO number 10. So another unelected bureaucrat to take control because no one would elect this CEO in number 10. What a joke. That's what the Prime Minister meant to be, you clown. We would need the old Boris back. I miss the old Boris, the four lies Boris. I can't, I can't do a Kanye West flow. He would have to ditch the national insurance increases, which, okay, that's fine. He would have to. Embrace a freeze on public spending, bad and accept major shifts to the green agenda, also bad considering we're in a climate crisis. There would need to be a clear out of the cabinet as well as advisors. Which cabinet do you, which cabinet members do you actually have an issue with? Because have you seen the lack of talent in the Tory party? It's scary. With all the, um, so clear out the cabinet as well as the advisors, with all the neo-socialists, like you're telling me in the Conservative Party um, cabinet there are neo-socialists. This dude, this dude, man, is on something, I'm telling you. Green fanatics. I mean, again, we're in a climate crisis. Pro-woke crowd. Who, Who is the pro-woke crowd in the cabinet? What? Is he, is he talking about minorities? Is he talking about like people like Patel and Sunak? Are they the issue? Pro-woke crowd. What does that mean? In the cabinet. Every policy would need to be judged on whether it makes Brexit Britain more competitive. All right. Should we bring back slavery then? Because that would make Brexit Britain more competitive. Is that what we should do? Labour camps, should we do that as well? And or how it improves the lives and address the fears of the culturally um, conservative and aspirational Britain. So essentially bring back slavery then, isn't it? Let's go. Because, um, yeah, how is it going to make Britain more competitive and improve the lives um, of people in this country? It's not. What he wants to do is improve the lives of the culturally conservative and aspirational Britain. But the people who are aspirational in this country realistically need a Labour government who are actually going to help them rather than you jokers. The aim would be to ruthlessly, ruthlessly target the 43.6% of the electorate who voted Tory in 2019. So essentially a tyranny of majority, that's what he's looking for. But by following the broadly conservative approach these voters expect. But the thing is, right... The reason why Boris Johnson won these seats right isn't through traditional conservatism. He won them through right-wing populism. He won them through levelling up and promising money to these constituencies. So this argument he's making here that Boris Johnson can appeal to essentially people in the Red Wall and the North of England whilst taking a traditional conservative approach um, doesn't make sense because if it did, Theresa May and David Cameron would have won over these people. So his whole argument in this paragraph makes no sense. Rather than the weird blend of reheated neo brown eye, he loves that phrase at neo, neo everything, neo social, um, neo brown eye social democracy. Again, we don't even have that, do we? Because 
Gordon Brown wouldn't have done a national insurance increase on the poorest workers and, you know, some of the poorest workers in the country. What an absolute joker this man is. Um, he talks about Whitehall, they need a, an absolute turn. Not only a total reset will do. No, only a total reset will do. So we need to essentially start all over again. You know, he needs to get rid of everyone and start again, which is, you know, a really stupid thing to claim that needs to be doing because you can't really do that. You can't get rid of everyone and start again. It doesn't make sense. The second option, regrettably, I mean, why regrettably? It'd be easier to have a clear out if you had a new person in charge. Would be for Johnson to step down and be replaced by somebody who follows an improved version of the 2019 strategy. The only person I believe in the cabinet who could do that is Listras. He or she would then need to impose at great speed an agenda that fuses pro-capitalist reforms. Like what? What, what pro-capitalist reforms do you want? Just cuts in corporation tax, cuts in income tax, cuts in national insurance. What do you want? While appealing to suburban cultural conservatives with a tough agenda on crime. Well, the conservatives have cut, um, you know, judges, um, have cut judges, have cut um, seating for judges. So it means they have less sitting days, consistently cut the police, cut legal aid. So how are the conservatives going to be tough on crime after doing all of that? You joker. Cut the CPS as well. Human rights. So with a tough agenda on human rights, what does that even mean? Are you talking about refugees? Wokery? Yeah, get the government involved in dealing with the woke. Yeah, that's very um, free, that's very free, isn't it? Very libertarian. Brexit and much else besides. Reverting to a Cameron Osborne southern hoodie and husky hugging approach would be calamitous. What, what world does this guy live in, honestly? I Southern hoodie and husky hugging approach. Like th these phrases this person uses, does anyone actually understand what he's saying? I'm assuming he's talking about a more kind of Cameron Osborne approach where they're very pro uh, business, um, not the most pro worker, I guess. It, it doesn't, his phrasing doesn't make sense because he's asking to go back to traditional conservatism when that's what Cameron and Osborne were about. Um, more socially liberal and economically conservative. So be be more um, be more like a traditional conservative, but but not like Cameron and Osborne. No. The metropolitan elites have shifted to the left because of Brexit. I mean, no, they've shifted because... No, they haven't shifted at all. You guys have shifted because you claim Brexit would be some sort of utopia sunlit uplands, and they're not. Cameron was only successful when he briefly tackled... Uh, right attacked rightwards, taking on the SNP and promising a referendum. Well, that's not really that true, is it? Cameron didn't shift that much to the right to win the 20, uh, 2015 general election. Sky. The Prime Minister's two historical achievements, Brexit and the political alignment that returned the Tories to levels to support last seen in the 1980s, which, again, he didn't do that through traditional conservatism, did he? So that if the, he doesn't. this article doesn't make sense. Because on the one hand, he's saying, go back to traditional conservatism. And on the other hand, he's saying, oh, the Prime Minister needs to be more of a right-wing populist. It doesn't make sense. <sighs> giving, you know, this, giving them the mandate to reverse the UK's decline. Okay. How long has the UK been in decline for since the Great Recession? Because you guys have been in charge longer since then than um, the Labour Party have, so it doesn't make sense. On Brexit, the job is a quarter done, but I thought Boris Johnson ran on a campaign of get Brexit done. Now we're only a quarter done. Although the Northern Ireland issue remains resolved, unresolved, even though you guys were meant to resolve that with the withdrawal agreement and the Northern Ireland Protocol back in 2019. <sighs> only significant um, changes have involved immigration and foreign policy, which they haven't really involved foreign policy. You could argue the only bit that has done is in trade. Nothing else has really changed in foreign policy. Yet the former, so about immigration, is being ruined by a shocking inability to control illegal arrivals from France. And you know, he's talking about refugees here. Do you know why the refugee crisis in the UK is getting far worse? It's because we're out of the Dublin 3 agreement. Do you know who's part of the Dub Dublin 3 agreement? EU members, honestly. A hugely, um, and the latter, a hugely significant and laudable gain discovered by, delivered by List Trust doesn't affect normal, normal people's lives sufficiently because they can't. Because if you start deregulating to get these trade deals with Brazil, um, say the BRICS countries, right, and um, you know, Australia and other countries, you're going to lose the EU who are our biggest single trading partner. So it doesn't make any sense. Yes, Truss has signed deals, but through no fault um, of her own, she has been prevented from being as liberal as she could have been. What else did you want her to do? We've, we're, I think we're already on the hook for hormone uh, beef and other things that we're not allowed to actually use in the UK. So what are you talking about? Again, these guys, they love giving vague statements, no specifics. 
all the other tweaks to the um, Aquace. I mean, why are you using French words for? Surely you should just use English words. Um, some French word there. Post Brexit could have been delivered by Labour. I mean, Labour would not have delivered what you clowns have delivered. Let's be real here. It'd be extremely easy to rejoin. This, this is his key problem in green, right? Hence why I've highlighted it in green. It would be extremely easy to rejoin the single market tomorrow, given how little true divergence has taken place. So what this person really wants, right, is um, divergence from the EU in order to stop us rejoining. That's what he wants. And that's what's going to make the title of this video very hard to, to write because he's given me multiple options. Brexit can only deliver its potential if it's accompanied by a series of radical reforms. So I thought, you know, it'd be enough, you know, we would... Um, have the single market and free trade deals around the world. I thought, you know, Brexit is around on having higher standards than the EU, and now suddenly we need lower standards. It doesn't make sense. The un antiquated nature of the civil service untackled, which again, the civil service are fine. They do a good job. The tax system, which has become ever less pro enterprise and pro growth. Well, that's you guys, isn't it? And you guys have implemented national insurance increases and other things that have made it less pro enterprise. So. Once again, what's your problem, dude? Boris Johnson has done these things. Britain is a worse place to do business than it was 5, 10 or 20 years ago. So you're saying, right, Britain now is a worse place to do business than under new Labour. Because if that's the case, um, yeah, it shows you the Tories are that bad. There is more regulation rather than less. Freeports have been uh, uh, adulterated beyond recognition. That's because freeports don't actually work. You can't do trade from freeports. It doesn't make sense. They use predominantly for crime. The planning system is a joke. If you have, bro, like he's like, this guy is listing loads of unrelated Brexit issues and he's kind of bundled them into this one article about Brexit predominantly, which is Freeport, which we could have had as a member of the EU, the planning system, which I'm assuming he's talking about planning permission, which again, the Tories have had over a decade to sort out if they wanted to, haven't. Universities are a mess. Not really. Universities are fine apart from the high fees which I'm sure you'd be a, scat a fan of. Schools are in decline, down to cuts from the Conservative Party for the last 11 years. The NHS is imploding um, as a result of systemic institutional failure. That's down to you guys, um, you know, being incredibly xenophobic and, you know, essentially pushing people, uh, minorities out, that, you know, nurses from the EU, doctors from the EU and other medical professionals. That's on you guys. Consistent cuts over the last decade and privatisation. So again, if your argument that the NHS is imploding, um, you're right, and that's because of the Tory party, which you have no doubt backed. This is madness. It's true, he is madness. We need revolutionary shifts in a range of areas, which again is true. But the problem is, you know, we both agree there are problems here. We'll never agree to the solutions. In each case, the UK needs to be the best place in Europe and hopefully the world to which to hire, set up or expand a business, erect a factory or recruit scientists, which again is never going to happen. We'll never be the best place in the world unless we have massive incentives um, financial incentives from the government or just completely start deregulating stuff and even then we wouldn't be the best for business would we it just you can't compete with countries like india and china it's a massive race to the bottom then and i don't think people in the uk would be happy with that unless all of this happens the establishment drumbeat that brexit has been a failure will grow ever louder it's true have you seen the queues at the border and the um the more we deregulate the f the longer that queue for export is going to get at the dover calais crossing by the late 2020s, a Labour government will feel sufficiently emboldened to sign back up to the myriad of EU initiatives, which we are also part of some of those EU initiatives like Horizon. So again, what's your issue here, dog? The Tories must diverge so much that this becomes impossible. So this, again, this is the key point. He wants massive deregulation in order to stop the UK joining the EU again because this is all it's about it's culture war nonsense he's mentioned loads of economic policies which are an absolute joke he's talked about planning permission schools hospitals which he doesn't understand the thing that's causing these institutions problems isn't the EU or our, our former EU membership it's the Tory party the great realignment is one of Johnson's achievements which again he did that through right-wing populism not traditional conservatism Consi consisting of Brexiteers Thatcherites, blue collar workers, suburbanites and the aspirational lower middle classes including a growing number of ethnic minorities and wealthier southern shire dwellers which again that coalition is probably going to break because I would be amazed if some of the Thatcherites weren't annoyed at the fact that um, you know in terms of trade we're doing very badly. I'm sure some of those Thatcherites would be fans of having lower standards for people coming into the UK because 
predominantly they want people to work um, for as cheap as possible. Blue collar workers, again, you know, that's an American term talking about working class people. <sighs> this article is a complete mess because Johnson will struggle to appeal to all of these people because he's going to struggle to people appeal to people in the North and the South because the Southerners don't want to increase taxes for infrastructure projects in the North and Northerners need more infrastructure projects. They need development in those areas because they've been um, left behind by consistent governments. So again, this person's arguments make no sense. And that's why you're seeing people in the South annoyed. Because they see their tax money going north. Because we're not a United Kingdom, not really. We're barely a divided country. England is very divided. A united country, sorry. England is very divided. It can sometimes make sense to play for time in the hope something turns up. No, it doesn't. Not in government. You know, play for time. This isn't, you know, this isn't the Champions League final. Where we've got the ball and, you know, we're 1-0 up. We're down on the scorecards. Play for time. This country's in tatters. Do you think people who have to choose between heating their home and buying food can play for time? They're desperate now. They need help now. So th this man, absolute highest levels of fraudulence. Honestly, I just can't stand, you know, like some of these people are actually make me lose my hair, honestly. I actually have a decent set of hair. And reading articles by people like Alistair Heath and that last dude we talked about, actually very painful and this person Roland Smith points out Alistair Heath wants divergence from the EU to make it harder for the UK government to rejoin in uh, the rejoin the single market that's why he wants this <sighs> the fraudulence of these people who write in the telegraph is astounding absolutely astounding you know this is some you know you know do, uh, you know some d-tier uh, propaganda as well at least the other guy who wrote the pe the propaganda piece the other week was way better than this. This guy needs to read more Goebbels or something because he's not very good at propaganda. But anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.